Okay, I'm just gonna do a brief overview of this Grimsey T3 V3 gimbal connected to a Pixhawk flight controller and using a Horus X10 for control. Starting out, we've got power coming in. It's uh, 15 to 33 volts. This is rated. There's a, a regulator in here that can only take up to 33. The gimbal itself can technically run on up to 52, but you need an, at least 15 volts. Okay, so to start out, we've got the the Horus here. Uh, we have all the switches and knobs labeled. We have three gimbal modes here. We've got off, which means the motors are completely off. And then we've got lock and follow. If I go to lock here, here you'll see it uh, comes to life. It boots up and it points straight forward. Once you're in lock, you can slew the camera uh, all the way left and right there there's eventually it comes to a stop because there's no slip ring in there and then in um in follow mode it's the same thing it'll start front and center and then it'll follow the heading uh of the mount for the gimbal uh the next switch we've got here we've got roll there's a detent here so you know when it's centered but you can command roll left and right and then we've got tilt uh, pan and tilt speed here is on this knob. If you go all the way up, you have the fastest pan and tilt speed. We've pan and tilt on the right stick here. And then we've got the uh, arm and disarm switch. If you pull it towards you, you're on disarm. Flip it out and you're in arm. The way that that would be utilized is while you're on the ground, before you take off, you would just arm the system and make sure everything's working correctly. The flight controller will not uh, correctly log the GPS waypoints of the photos unless it thinks the vehicle's flying. So it has to be armed and thought that it's flying. Once it is flying, you can use the shutter control here. You can hear the relay clicking in here. We're using the Sony multi-port connector, which is just a micro USB, but it has extra pins in it. And we, we hand make this wire and what you get is when you short the orange and the yellow wire here, uh, you get the camera is commanded to autofocus and then fire the shutter. And that is just connected into the uh, directly into the, the gimbal stage here. Uh, the other one things here on the stage uh, HDMI, uh, it's micro HDMI, so we're providing a micro HDMI to micro, which is what the camera is. And then we've also got 14.5 volts regulated to run the camera. This is a dummy battery and it takes up to 25 in, uh, and then it spits out a regulated eight volts for the camera to run on. So this would go inside the camera, you plug this into the stage and it runs the camera all day. Uh, as far as the gimbal here, we've got a multi-conductor wire here. We've got six signal pins and two power pins. It comes up to a panel mount conductor here. This can be mounted on the outside of the dome, so it's easily plugged and unplugged. And then we come into the dock here, or the mount. You've got your power, 15 to 55 in. S-Bus is what we're using for gimbal control. This is the auxiliary port. Like I said, the, all the color codes are consistent throughout so your yellow and orange are up there that's what we're uh, triggering the shutter with that can be reconfigured to do pwm control or other methods for uh, camera triggering in the future and then we've got uh, serial for controlling the gimbal automatically using the flight controller we've got transmit and receive on the blue and green and then uh, power and ground there the gr power is actually created at the gimbal dock here and we're sending that power down to the camera stage in case you use any kind of uh, shutter controller that needs five volts. So there is five volts available then. And then uh, we've got micro HDMI coming out and then I've got a micro HDMI to full size HDMI. So you can just use a full size HDMI uh, cable into the cockpit. So that's um, a good overview there. Uh, we're also giving you a micro USB cable that'll allow you to connect to the Pixhawk through the micro USB port here. And um, a couple other things here. If this is um, if this is not armed, 
you'll see it says disarmed. Uh, this button automatically is in the correct position. This is a safety switch. If this gets pushed by mistake, it goes into a safe mode blinking, and that means it won't send any commands to the gimbal. So no matter what I do here, the gimbal will not work. It's designed for drones, so the motors are in a safe position. So if that ever happens, you can just turn it back on and, and then it starts sending commands again. And this button, it will not listen to this button if this is in the arm position. So you don't have to worry about it being hit by accident. These uh, LEDs are indicating how good of a GPS fix. I'm in a building right now, so these don't have a very good fix at all. That's what blue indicates. Uh, green means that there's a, a 3D fix. Okay, so that's just a little overview here. Uh, let us know if you have any other questions about the system and setting up the gimbal balancing and gimbal tuning. It's a whole other process.